Last time, I showed you how to create a simple C program and then upload it to the Raspberry Pi Pico after compiling it to a UF2 file. This is all well and good, but what happens if you want something a little more hardcore, like, say, a debugger? Good news! In this episode, I'm going to show you how to configure OpenOCD and GDB within VS Code to give yourself a full step-through debugger. Note that to do this, you're going to need a second Raspberry Pi Pico to act as the hardware debugger. More good news? They're cheap! Let's talk about how this debugging setup will work as it involves a number of parts. We'll start with our target Pico. This is the board that will ultimately be running our code and we'll just use the Blink example from the first episode to keep things simple. Note that we'll upload the .elf file of the compiled firmware as it contains some extra information that helps us do line by line debugging. We'll need a second Pico as our programmer and debugger. For many other embedded systems, this debugger would be a separate piece of hardware sold by the vendor and could sometimes be quite expensive. However, thanks to the RP2040's programmable I.O. feature, we can emulate the serial wire debug, or SWD interface, used to upload programs and debug the target RP2040. Raspberry Pi has written a special firmware called PicoProbe that we will upload to our debugger. We'll need to connect the PIO controlled pins on the debugger to the SWD pins on the target Pico. We want the debugger to provide power to the target Pico, so we'll also connect the power and ground pins. We'll connect the VSYS pins for power as that comes from the USB port. Being able to interact with the serial terminal is still useful even with step through debugging. The Pico probe includes code to pass UART messages to USB, which means we'll want to connect the two UART ports together. Finally, we'll connect the debugger to our computer over USB. We'll run a program on our computer called OpenOCD, which is short for Open On Chip Debugger. It's a server that communicates with any connected JTAG or SWD debugger devices. As a server, it opens a port waiting for a connection from the GNU debugger, or GDB. GDB is the actual debugging software. It's a command line utility that's normally used to debug programs on Unix or Linux, but it has a remote mode that can send commands to a server such as OpenOCD. If you're familiar with GDB, you can probably stop there. However, I'm not very familiar with it, so I'm going to install the Cortex debug extension in VS Code, which talks to GDB. With this extension, we get a graphical way to debug code, including the ability to pause execution, run one line at a time, and peek at variable and register values. As of right now, there's no easy way to set all of this up, so we have to do it manually. But Raspberry Pi gives us all the tools to do it. If you would like to see what I'm about to show you in written form, check out my article on maker.io. I'll make sure there's a link to it in the description. That way you can work through this process at your own pace. Once again, the Getting Started Guide is a fantastic resource. To start, you'll need to build OpenOCD. I recommend checking out Appendix A to see how to do that. Note that we're not using regular OpenOCD. This is a special Pico version of OpenOCD that has some changes in the source code to work with PicoProbe, which is why we need to build it. If you're on Linux or Mac, the process is pretty easy. Just run these commands to install some packages and build the tool. With Windows, it's a bit trickier. This guide assumes you're working with msys2. As long as you're building OpenOCD, I also recommend building PicoTool. We won't use PicoTool in this tutorial, but it's a useful tool for inspecting compiled binaries and interacting with a connected RP2040 on a low level. I put together a guide showing you how to build the Pico OpenOCD and Pico tool on Windows using Git for Windows SDK. It's a little different than what's shown in the Getting Started guide. I'll make sure a link to this guide is also in the description. Alternatively, I also shared my built OpenOCD and Pico tool if you'd like to just download the executables. Head to bit.ly slash pico tools windows. There, you'll find the Pico version of OpenOCD along with PicoTool. 
Both were built for Windows and contain the libusb 1.0.dll file you need to run them. Download them and put them somewhere on your computer where you can easily find them. Note that you need to keep the libusb 1.0.dll file in the same directory as the executable for the tools to work. I keep both executables in the folders where I built them close to the Pico SDK. You can add Pico tool to your system path so you can call it from any command line if you wish. I do not recommend adding OpenOCD to your path. Because this is built for the RP2040, it might conflict with other versions of OpenOCD you might use for debugging other embedded projects. Don't worry, we'll tell VS Code where to find this particular executable on a per project basis. You'll want to solder headers on both sides of your Pico boards. You'll also want to solder headers onto the SWD port of your target board. I used a female header here so that I can use male-to-male -male jumper wires for everything. Then, connect your two Pico boards as shown. Pins 4 and 5 on the Pico probe go to the SWD pins on the target. Pins 6 and 7 go to the UART port. And you'll also want to connect VSYS and ground between the boards. Here is how I connected my boards together using two breadboards. Remember, we only want to connect the Pico Probe board to our computer. Let's go ahead and put the Pico Probe into bootloader mode. Press and hold the boot select button and connect a USB cable. The target Pico may start running whatever was previously loaded into it. Don't worry about that as we're about to upload a new program to it. Open VS Code and open a terminal. Navigate to wherever you keep your Pico projects, which is in the Documents folder of my home directory for me. Use git to clone the Pico Probe project from the Raspberry Pi GitHub account. Go into the Pico Probe directory and create a build directory. This is just like we did for the Blinky example in the first episode. Go into the build directory and called CMake. Once again, you'll want to specify the generator for CMake. This will be Unix make files on Linux or Mac OS. If you're using Windows like I am, you'll want to specify nmake make files if you installed the build tools for Visual Studio. Since I'm doing everything with MinGW, I'll specify MinGW make files. Then specify where CMake can find the CMake lists text file, which should be up one directory. When that's done setting up the build system, simply call make and wait for it to finish. Figure out where on your computer the RPI RP2 drive is mounted, which looks like it's the F drive for me. Copy the picoprobe.uf2 file to that drive. That will program the debugger Pico. When the file is done uploading, the debugger Pico should automatically restart and start running the Pico Probe firmware. The LED on the Pico Probe should be steady on. If you're on Windows, you'll need to install the libusb driver. This driver should come with macOS and most flavors of Linux, so you should not need to perform this step if you're on one of those operating systems. In a web browser, search for Zadig, go to the Zadig page, and download the latest version. Zadig is a simple executable, so just run it and accept the pop-up notification to let it make changes to Windows. Select Options, List All Devices. Click the drop-down menu. You should see that Pico Probe has two interfaces. One is for debug commands, and the other is the pass-through serial device. Select Interface 2, which is the USB interface for the debug commands. Select libusb win32 as the new driver, and click Install Driver. Wait for a moment while that installs, and then close Zadig when it's done. In a new terminal, navigate to wherever you keep your OpenOCD executable that you built or downloaded. If you're on Windows, you might need to have libusb 1.0.dll in the same folder. Run the executable and give it the path to the TCL folder where it will find the config files and scripts. You'll also want to specify the Pico Probe and RP2040 config files, which should be in the interface and target directories inside TCL. When OpenOCD runs, it will be listening on port 3333. In another command prompt or in the terminal in VS Code, navigate to the build folder in your Blink project. Note that you can right-click on a folder in the Explorer and select Open in Integrated Terminal to do this. The project should have already been built from the previous episode. If not, run the make command or click the build button.
When that's done, run the ARM NUN EABI GDB executable, which should be on your system path. If not, you'll have to find where it's located on your computer to run it. The GNU ARM embedded toolchain comes with the ARM debugger, so it should be in the same folder as your ARM compiler. Give it blink.elf. When it runs, press enter to continue. You should now be at the GDB interactive terminal. Enter target remote localhost colon 3333 to connect to the open OCD server. Then enter load to upload the compiled binary to the target RP2040. Type monitor reset init to tell open OCD to reset the target board. Finally, enter continue to tell the target RP2040 to start running normally. This should cause the target Pico to start blinking. GDB can be used to set breakpoints, step through code, and look at memory values. If you know GDB, this is probably good enough for you to get started debugging the Pico. I'm not very familiar with it, so I'm going to show you how to set up debugging in VS Code so you get a nice set of graphical tools. Back in VS Code, you can press Ctrl C to stop execution and type quit to exit GDB. You should also shut down OpenOCD. Click on the Extensions button and search for Cortex. Install the Cortex debug extension as that will give us step through debugging with OpenOCD and GDB. You will also need the C and C++ extension which provides code completion through IntelliSense along with some other debugging tools. Click on the Explorer button and create a new folder in your Blink project named .vscode. This will hold settings unique to this project. The Pico Examples repository has templates for the two config files that we need, so let's just copy those in. First, we'll copy launch-raspberrypi-swd.json from Pico Examples slash IDE slash VS Code into this .VS Code directory and rename it to launch.json. Next, we'll copy in settings.json from the same directory, but leave it named settings.json. We'll need to make a few changes to these files as they were originally made for debugging the Pico from a Raspberry Pi single board computer. First, change GDB path to the location of your GDB program. If GDB is on your system path, like it is for me, you can just change this to the name of the tool. With the GNU ARM toolchain, this would be ARM NUN EABI GDB. Next, change the interface config file to interface slash picoprobe.cfg, as we're using the Pico probe instead of a Raspberry Pi to debug the target. The svd file variable should point to the rp2040.svd file wherever you installed the Pico SDK. If you have Pico SDK path set as an environment variable like we did in the previous episode, you can leave this line alone. Add a comma to the last item and create a new search deer item. Here, we'll provide the TCL directory of wherever we built or downloaded the Pico version of OpenOCD. You'll want this to be a single element in an array. Even though this is Windows, I can still use forward slashes in these VS Code JSON files to make things easier to read. If you use backslashes in the path, you'll have to use double backslashes to avoid it escaping the other characters. Save this file and open settings.json. The only thing you'll need to do here is add a comma after the last item and append the Cortex Debug Open OCD Path name and value pair. For the value, enter the path to the OpenOCD executable. This is how we prevent needing to install OpenOCD globally on our computer in the system path. Our Blink project will only use this specific executable that was created for Pico projects. Feel free to change the build visibility to default if you don't want the build button hidden on the status bar. I like to have the button available in case I want to build the project without uploading it to the target Pico. Just remember that you'll need both launch.json and settings.json in any project you create with VS Code in order to debug programs on the RP2040. Feel free to use the files we create in this folder as templates for future projects if you're working with VS Code. Save this file. We need to make one change to our project before we start debugging. 
OpenCMakeLists.txt. In the first episode, we were using printf to print things to the serial terminal over USB. Since we don't have a USB cable plugged into our target, we need to change that to the UART pins, which are connected to the Pico Probe debugger. Change the STDIO USB option to 0 and change STDIO UART to 1. When you save this file, you should see that CMake is automatically called to create new build files. Click on the debug button on the left side of VS Code. At the top, you'll have the option of creating multiple configurations, but we should just have the debug configuration to start. Click the play button next to the drop down menu. This will build your project, upload it to the target Pico, and start OpenOCD and GDB. The status bar at the bottom should turn orange, and you should see a marker appear on main. You can use the control buttons at the top of the window to step through the code line by line. You can also jump into functions to see exactly what's happening. In addition, you can set and remove breakpoints by clicking on the red dots to the left of the line numbers. When you click continue, code will execute up to the next breakpoint. On the left, you can watch the values of variables and registers inside the RP2040. Press shift control P to bring up the command prompt. Search for View Memory. Click on Cortex Debug View Memory. You'll be asked for a starting memory address. SRAM starts at hex 2000000000 on the RP2040, so let's enter that. Next, you'll be asked for the length of how much memory you want to watch. I'll enter 1024. This will bring up a pane on the right side that lets you watch the memory inside the RP2040. Finally, our printf statement is being sent through the Pico probe. So, open your favorite serial terminal program and connect it to the Pico probe with 115,200 baud rate. I can step through each line of code and watch it happen in real time. We have essentially turned VS Code into a full-fledged integrated development environment for the RP2040. While you can use printf to do some debugging, nothing beats having the ability to step through lines of code and peek at memory values. Next time, I'll show you how to create simple PIO programs using C and assembly. Happy hacking!